Pardon. Okay, so today, the last uh, class, I'd like to spend uh, some time in uh, describing you one uh, funny and uh, new say, automation technology, which is gaining uh, some sort of momentum. Uh, it's called the Notion, and it's, it's a, a wireless uh, technology that is uh, expanding some way. Uh, and so it's competing with uh, Z-Wave and with uh, Zigbee, but it has uh, unique features uh, concerning the energy management. That's why I, uh, I'd like to spend some time uh, describing it. Uh, and at the same time, it's quite uh, under an, an open development, uh, um, let's say, framework. And so it's, uh, it's the result of collaboration between different players, uh, even if uh, the core technology is uh, come from one single company. So I'm talking about Inotion. Uh, Inotion actually started from uh, the idea that uh, one of the problems that you have when you try to deploy a lot of sensors, uh, especially wireless sensors, is that they need somehow to be powered. So uh, on the long term, uh, it turns out that changing the batteries, for example, or all the sensors that you have around, uh, can take a lot of effort and a lot of uh, money. And uh, uh, at the same time, they thought that uh, there's a lot of free energy in the environment. Nowadays, we, are, we have low power silicon and chips that really require a lot of a very uh, limited amount of power and of energy to operate. Uh, we have efficient uh, radio communication protocols that uh, uh, are very energy efficient also. And uh, uh, so even a small source of energy can be used to power your electronics, okay? Maybe just a fraction of a second, but they, that might be enough uh, for your sensor to transmit data and so on. So the notion uh, designed a set of uh, components and standards that uh, try <clears throat> in some way to exploit the energy available in the environment uh, that the sensor is uh, called to operate onto. So in many cases, you will find components that are self-powered, and uh, it's nice to see how, the different ways. So actually, <clears throat> we have this... Uh, um, two types uh, of modules. Uh, on the left, uh, you can see the basic, uh, say, uh, self-powered module. On the right, uh, a, a normal module. So for example, if you have to connect to some actuator, usually, or uh, maybe a, a valve or a switch, or, uh, so you are already near or connected to a power source. You have the energy for doing that. So that energy could uh, operate uh, your module that, of course, uh, at that point just needs to have some uh, um, radio section and some uh, uh, computing section, so a microcontroller chip and the radio frequency section for handling the wireless protocol. But it's more interesting on the left side, on the left-hand side here, where we have the radio section, we have the microcontroller, microcontroller but we imagine having Maybe just imagine a temperature or, or a um, lightning sensor up there in the corner of the room. So where does it get power from? Uh, so it has a, a sensor that is able to, that's the, the reason for the device to exist, to, to sense some physical quantity, but uh, we may keep the same device with an energy converter, so a, a some electronics, uh, that is able to capture energy, free energy available in the environment. And uh, this is, must be coupled with an uh, energy management module, so that decides when, for how long, when and for how long to power the microcontroller, when and for how long to power the sensor, when for how long to power the radio section, and so on. So we have uh, a limited amount of energy, and this energy is, let's say, uh, extracted from the environment, and we must manage this energy optimally. 
So every component, of course, should be as low power as possible, but then they won't be able to be kept on at all times. If you are sensing something, probably the sensor should be on most of the time. The radio section, which is the most power consuming, uh, very likely, uh, will just need to be uh, switched on just for a very short period of time. So it's also a circuit design that enables to uh, give and take uh, uh, power to the different modules uh, in very quick times. Energy, where does it come from? We say that the environment is full of energy. Uh, the energy and the main uh, the components uh, that we see are uh, exploiting many three times. Uh, so the first component that you, we, we can use, we can see, are exploiting three types uh, of energy. Uh, solar energy is the easiest to understand. So, for example, we have here some components uh, using this uh, technology mm -hmm. that we will learn better. And uh, Let's take this one. Uh, this is just, there are, there are um, say, naked components. They are not uh, yet, uh, um, they don't have the caging or the packaging just to see what's in there. So in this component, which is a temperature sensor, the board for one temperature sensor, it has, this wire is the antenna that enables uh, the device to communicate. And, uh, on, if you flip it around, you see a small solar panel. Tiny, just one centimeter by three. Uh, you can put your sensor up the wall, up on the wall, and it will, just with the lightning on the environment, it will charge its own uh, energy storage, and it will be able to power the, you see this chip here, with uh, contains the controller and uh, the radio section. So this, this is the, the easiest idea. We have uh, very small, somewhat efficient, they don't need to be extra efficient solar panels. They give you a, not a constant, but sort of a continuous flow of, of power, then you can accumulate and have some energy budget that you can spend when you need to communicate. And at the same time, the, the sensor can be kept powered at all times. A second source of energy is mechanical energies. So whenever we have something, you have something that moves, you can exploit the kinetic energy of that device. And just imagine when you're switching light on, you are pressing a button and you are doing some work against the spring that is inside the button. So this, is amount, is amount, is, this work amounts to a small energy, force time displacement, huh? remember from the physical courses. And this allows us to create uh, other types of devices. This is a switch, for example, the antenna, the chip, and then we have the switch lever here. You see, you can click it up, tuck, click it down, tuck. You can, with this small movement, you have to, of course, you will have to package it with something that's easier to operate. But this small uh, movement will be able, you see some coils inside. So, so with coils and magnets, and the uh, movement, you generate current, electrical current. So why, by moving this, you are moving some magnet relative to the position of the coils, and so it will induce electrical current into the coil, and that can be, can be captured and stored. Of course, every click of the, of the switch is a small amount of energy nanojoules probably, but they may be enough hmm, for you. Uh, this is another form factor. It's more packed, uh, packaged already, so you can have an idea of how it looks like when it's finished. You see this, this is the finished side, this is the half-finished side, 
of the de uh, device and is closed this package. So if you want to open it, you, you will see a, a circuit. And the, in this case, is a push button. So in that case, it was a switch on and off. Here, it's a push button. You can push up, push down. It's a bit hard to push. Every time you push, you're giving energy to it. Huh? So by pushing, so imagine you can use it, you can use this as a light switch in your home. You go there, you push the switch, push the button actually, and the push of the button gives to the circuit enough energy for it to wake up and transmit to other components, to the actuator, the command of switching on the light. And then this small amount of energy will run out and the device will die on its own power. But it, it did the job, actually. Another very interesting technology is uh, uh, exploiting thermoelectric energy. So don't get me uh, too deep into this issue because it's uh, actually thermodynamic issues, but when you, whenever you have a, a differential of temperature, so two points that are very close and that are, that are kept at different amount of temperature, then you can have a flow of heat okay, between the two points. And this flow can be used to generate electrical current again. It generate, actually generates a difference of, of potential, of voltage potential, and this different potential can be captured uh, as a current. And you find it, uh, uh, just imagine you want to control the heating of a house. So you have some sensor on the, uh, on the, um, on the terminals of the heating uh, uh, plant, huh? on, uh, on, all the, on, on all the elements, or the heating element that you have in your house. That, that you have, we will have some hot or cold in summer, water flowing. And this water will be at the temperature which is different from the environment. Otherwise the plant is not needed, it will be used off. So there will be by design a, a temperature differential and that can be exploited. Or just some, uh, put something outside uh, or on a, on a glass of a window. Windows, doors naturally separate the environments and the two sides usually have different temperatures. So, um, and they are designing more type of devices. So pressures, just imagine walking on a surface. If you work, walk on a, on, a, on a carpet, maybe you can give the energy for, for the carpet to say that somebody is entering or, or exiting. Uh, rotation, just imagine having sensors into wheels uh, of trucks. You have a lot of energy there huh, to spare. You just have to have uh, some little piezoelectric or, or magnetic uh, device just to collect this energy from the rotation. Or vibrations. Vibrations are everywhere huh, in all mechanical parts. Vibrating is something that it's wasted energy usually. Hmm? But you can, okay, all these uh, energy extraction methods are not efficient. We, we don't need them to be efficient. Why don't we use them just to power our lightning? Oh, because there's too much wasted energy. It's not a constant flow of energy. It cannot be very high on power level because there's a lot of waste. But in this case, we don't care. We just need some, so, uh, some millijoules <laughs> to last for sending out one network packet. So this was the, 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 the starting idea, no? creating components that could not all of them, of course, need them because some will be powered anyway. But some of them could just uh, live in the environment uh, and never need any maintenance, never need any battery changing, never need any recharging. Um, that was the idea. Later, they then designed they designed the technology, hmm? the technology where uh, they, the Notion Consortium and the companies behind that uh, provide everything from the hardware, so the modules for radio communication, receive and transmit, and uh, the microcontrollers and input outputs that you need uh, to, um, to build the system. Uh, actually, if you go, there will be, if you look at the, these two components, 
actually have the very same chip here and there. So actually there's one or two chips, uh, chips that you can use uh, to create your own uh, uh, boards uh, with the uh, Inotion technology. And the chip already contains all the microcontroller, all the firmware and so on. And you will have other, you will, we will describe them later, but uh, if you see these are two communication models, masters on the network, and they need to have more functionality than just sensors. These are modules, imagine you need the USB key for interfacing with the PC, and this is another module to be mounted on the Raspberry interface. Okay, like the, like the Z-Wave module is an Inotion module, and you see that they have also the same chip here and there. This is a component that you can buy from the manufacturers. This is a component that we created in our labs, and we just bought the chip. But the chip that you can buy for building the board is the same chip that actually the big manufacturers are using for their product. So there's a, a set of chips that give you the capability uh, of creating uh, these uh, uh, um, in ocean enabled devices, sensors or controllers. There's a lot of software being specified and available in the software development kits that they provide that you can buy to create your own application. And on top of that, of course, uh, you have the user application. So if you want tomorrow to make a, a, you know, a water flow sensor, then you need just to concentrate on the top level. And in particular, you need to de develop your own sensor and interface it to the hardware, but then everything else is already part of the kit that you can buy. And so it's, very, it's quite easy to create new type of products because all the infrastructure is the same. Moreover, the compatibility with, between the different the type of devices is sort of guaranteed because the providers of the lower levels are actually the same. One, not just, just one big company hmm, that provides this. And if you see at these uh, chips, they are actually stamped with Inotion, okay, down there. So they're being certified and uh, guaranteed to work. Hmm? Okay. Um, so what is the, uh, oh, sorry. What is the radio architecture of, uh, of Inotion uh, system? So you may have uh, uh, different types of devices. Uh, one, the, the nicest ones are the battery release switches and sensors, and usually are just transmitters. So they just send data, uh, and when they don't need to send data, they just they are just dead, not even sleeping, dead. So there's no way of sending commands to them or sending data or configuration information to them. Uh, so that's uh, uh, the better of these devices are by design they can only transmit. Uh, then we have bidirectional components that may send and receive, and usually are the most intelligent ones. Uh, uh, you may have all this, of course, you have the gateway that connects to your PC or to other plants or to the management infrastructure, or you may have this sort of room controller, just imagine something in your room that gets information for all the sensors and then decides, gives commands to the actuators. So it needs a bit of processing power, a bit uh, of intelligence uh, uh, to operate. And then you have the actuators that just receive uh, messages. They don't need, uh, they don't need to to send anything out, uh, um, even if uh, they usually tend to be steadily powered. Hmm? They are not uh, batteries, they have batteries, or most likely they are just uh, a power source. Hmm? Uh, light actuator is close to a light, and there you have the energy to light, uh, to, to say, to feed the light, so the same energy can also feed the, the actuator. So, this, uh, you already have, say, artificial energy, not uh, environment energy. And all of this is being standardized in a series of uh, ISO uh, standards, and it can operate at different frequencies. The different frequencies are mainly for operating in different parts of the world according to the licensing of the radio frequencies. The same, you know, goes for Wi-Fi, where depending on where you are installing your access point, uh, uh, it will use a, a different set of, uh, of frequency just to comply with the regulations. 
So A78 is for Europe, uh, 900 megahertz is for uh, the Americas, and uh, um, there's also another spectrum in 300 megahertz for the Americas, but uh, it's uh, lower frequency, so it's less used in some way. And uh, you have the, all the lower levels that are being very strongly standardized, and the application level is somewhat uh, more dynamic because it's, ma it's made of a set uh, of uh, profiles. So you may have the network, so all the radio transmission protocol and mesh, which is already stable and interoperable and everything say, is working well. On top of that, you have different application profiles, for example, for the energy, for the lighting, and so on, that add uh, specification about what the information in the messages. Hmm? And uh, uh, this is uh, not uh, an ISO, these application profiles are not standardized at the ISO level, but uh, just by the notion alliance. So it, uh, it's more dynamic because uh, the different involved companies, the interested, the, the stakeholder companies, may define or may uh, say upgrade the definition of these profiles or define new ones when they need. Um, the reason why uh, Inocean tends to use uh, high frequencies in transmission, so eight or 900 megahertz, uh, they're close to the gigahertz range, is mainly the probability of getting a message through. You know, if you have a sensor, we just have a, as a, as a very limited time span after which it will die out of energy. Then when you send a message, you must be pretty sure that the message goes through and doesn't get lost due to collisions, to noise, or to any other uh, cause of message loss. So uh, you, you should have a very high chance of not losing messages, of a correct delivery of every message. You are not sending out many messages, but the few ones that you are sending out should be there. Because for probably, it may be the case that for the time when you realize that the message wasn't received, you don't have any more energy to retransmit it. Or you don't even have enough energy to check whether the message, or to, to, to get an acknowledge back. So uh, the designers try to use a high data rate uh, protocol for packing uh, data in very short time intervals. So the high frequency is, uh, of course, it will limit the range, but it will allow you to have a bit rate much higher. The bits will be shorter. And if they are shorter, they, a given message will last less microseconds. And so the probability that you, of collisions, basically, of having many sensors trying to transmit at the same frequency, at the same time, if these time slots are so small, are actually very small. Why, in the other cases, low data rate sensors working at 400 megahertz or 200 megahertz and so on, use more time for the same amount of data. And so when you increase the number of messages and the number of devices, the probability of collision increases. So what you see is that the transmission probability, of course, if you have only one device, it has all the spectrum for itself. But if you have uh, more devices transmitting, you see that Inocean keeps the permission probability very high. You see that it seems to drop, but this is 99.9%. So uh, at this point, it will be 99.99. You get one loss probability of one out of 10,000 um, at this level. While uh, at lower frequencies, you, you will drop more rapidly. So that's what was one of the design. Use a little power and hope for the best for the transmission of your messages. So select the radio technology that gives you the best probability. And for having some more information, for more details, there's this nice presentation by the Inocean Alliance group itself. That, sorry, it's not the full screen. 
So just, I will just skip the more interesting parts. Uh, you, you, you can have a look, they, 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 tell, they tell the story about, uh, um, and here you have some, some data, uh, some quantitative data about the examples that you, we saw before. Uh, for example, this uh, uh, electrodynamic energy generator, so actually it's a mag uh, coils and magnets, uh, it will uh, generate 100 microwatts per actuation. And the efficiency you see is very low, 20% of the mechanical energy gets converted into electrical energy. A button press. Solar cells, in this case, they are, you see, 5% five, 5 efficiency. If you are going to build a solar, plan, a solar roof with solar panels, you, will, you would aim for something much more, maybe 60-70% 70, 70, 70 of energy conversion efficiency. In this case, very low efficiency, just to keep the, the sensor cost lower, or, and, uh, and, but it's enough for you. And uh, in this case also, uh, the, the, thermal, the thermal conversion cell is based on a Peltier element uh, um, with, um, and it will operate uh, with just two degrees of difference. From if you have 18 degrees to 20 degrees, it will start producing energy in the range of millivolts, 20 millivolts. Mm -hmm. And they say that th there's enough energy uh, also for the actuators. Hmm? So uh, you, can, you, just, you don't have just the energy for the electronic parts, but also you have some spare energy to do some mechanical actuation. Um, and all of this has been implemented into this, uh, which is the main chip, uh, the single chip solution. This is the, the, so the architecture of this, uh, of this chip. As you see, it integrates all the radio frequency part, RF and the transmission protocol, and all the microcontroller. There's a CPU, some memory, some integrated peri peripherals, some RAM, and some uh, input-output uh, channels that we will connect to ex external devices. So actually, this chip contains everything you need uh, to build your own system. Uh, if we go back to the board that we designed, actually you see that this is a complete controller for the notion. As you see, there's, there's very few on chip, apart from the, oh, sorry, on the board, apart from the chip. Some restore, this is just a reset button that we added just to, <laughs> and this is just the anti-bounce uh, circuit for the button, so. One, two, three components are just for reset, and it, they are good for, for, de, for a development board, for debugging, just if something gets stuck, you reset everything. But they would go away in the final product. Just some resistor to, to give, a, um, let's say, to condition the, the, the electrical signals. And then you have a couple of LEDs and transistors to drive them. So a red and, and, and green just to sh see the Transmission and, and tra transmit and receive lines in the serial interface. So to see whether the chip is communicated, communicating with the Raspberry on the pins. So, but on the real device, this will be deleted because you don't need to monitor the serial. This will be deleted because you don't need to, to reset it and it just the chip itself. So actually, what they call the system on a chip. You have just one chip that integrates internally everything you need to build the complete system. Of course, if you take the other components, you have the chip, and also you have the sensors. And this will be the temperature sensor, this one. The thermocouple to, to, to sense the temperature. But of course, you, you, you will need the, the application, they say, of the, 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 the additional sensor and hardware, hardware. And you see that uh, each of these devices is optimized for energy consumption. So you see the amount of energy when, when it's off, it's just 20 nanoamperes. Nanoamperes is very, it's a one millionth of a milliampere, a milli micro nano. And this off mode just has just enough energy actually for the watchdog timer that will decide when the device will switch on again. 
and when it's fully running, uh, it goes to four million pairs, uh, or the electronic path. Is, if you switch on also the radio section, you will jump to 55 or 20 million pairs. So actually you see that transmission takes uh, 10 times more energy than computation, than the CPU, which uh, uh, can be 4 million pairs, can, be go, can go down to 15 micron pairs, can go down to 20 nanon pairs. So you have your energy management system has 1 million from 4 million pair to 20 nanon pairs is nearly 1 million, 100,000 range of energy. So the, the energy management just needs to decide whether, okay, I need the CPU, the CPU can sleep, or, can, or the CPU needs to be switched off. And then I have this range of savings. So this, um, the, energy the energy manager does its job uh, there. Hmm? Um, well, this is the same picture as before. Like you see the, the design of the, um, the chip, the, 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 the microcontroller chip. So all of this architecture that we saw before is integrated into, into this product. They called it uh, 3000 EO. In Ocean 3000 chip, then there's all the interfaces and all the digital and analog uh, interfaces, input and outputs, for building a complete device. And these are some examples where this chip is used in, a, in, a, in a, what they call applications. So the room control panels are something where the user goes and uh, pushes buttons and switches dials, uh, and the energy that the user provides uh, will feed the device. A duct temperature sensor, so it's something that if, if you have a pipe where uh, hot or, or fresh water will uh, flow, then you can measure the temperature of the liquid flowing, and the temperature of the liquid itself is, is enough to power the sensor, or another sensors. Gas sensors, fridges, uh, window contacts, that will tell you whether the door is open or closed, so you can go on with the, with the solar energy in this case, in many cases. The simplest case, the simplest application is solar energy. It gives you less, uh, less say, less amount of energy, but uh, it's, uh, it's a simpler and in the works in many cases. You have, you have the, the, the breakout of this component that we saw before. So we saw it packaged. If you unpackage it, you will see that there's, there's this this coil with the, with the magnet that will generate the energy and below it all the circuitry with the usual chip. So it's all the same. And well, uh, these are, I say, the basic components that have been, are, have been designed by the Inotion group, so by the companies who started all this. And here you see other types of devices that are being uh, uh, designed and man manufactured by other partners, by the other companies. So actually what you're starting to see is that there's a lot of design around these components. So these are components that try tend uh, or try to, to look nice, beautiful. Inside they have the same basic functionality. So switch, uh, you can recognize, you know, in hotels usually you have to plug your card to switch the, the light on. So the plugging of the card gives energy to the device. So it's a different sort of push button with a different shape, okay? But, and uh, it's very easy because, you know, uh, from the electrical point of view, from the, from the electrical wiring point of view, it's very efficient because if you just need to install this into some hotel or some room, you just have to screw it on the wall. And you don't need any wires, you don't need any, uh, say work on the walls, you don't need to, uh, to to drill anything. And if you change the layout of the room, you just unscrew it there, here, and screw it there, and it's done. And in any connection, you just have to, 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 to put it there, huh, to make it stand there. Um, uh, door handles. When you operate a door handle, 
just to mechanically open the door, you can give a signal that the door is being opened. So maybe the, the handle could also be fake. So you, are, you have a, maybe you have a big window or a big uh, something that with servo motors to move it, but you must intercept the command of the user to open the window. So if you have a big window to open or to a big door or a heavy door, just imagine to open, you may have servo motors to help you. What, what happens today is that there is a, some external command. So to open this door, you, just, you need to press a button somewhere near the door. In this case, you could just, you are know, thinking design issues. Uh, you can just have a, a fake handle. You go there, you move the handle, and that will give the command to the, to the motors, to the engines, to open the door, to the servo mechanism to open the door, or to help you push in the door. It will feel very natural. You have a door, you want to open it, you just go and bring the handle. And, but the handle itself is just a transmitter. Okay, it doesn't do the, the, the work, actually. Hmm? So it, uh, it opens new possibility, new design possibility. Normally, you wouldn't do that, because just taking two wires and bringing them down to the handle, you need to drill inside the, the, the door to hide them, and uh, it gets too to complex, too expensive. If you don't do that, you just put a button, a button there. Or you put a, a sensor. You know, there's a lot of doors with a sensor, present sensor there, so when people, people walk, walk nearby, the door will open. But the door will also open when people just are walking by. Hmm? They, don't, they don't want to cross the door. And so at that, at that point, you need to you, you intercept the, 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 the desire of opening the door, the will of doing that. Hmm? So there's a lot of applications. Uh, uh, in this case, you, you have a pedal for commanding something, and the, the chair that will sense whether somebody is sitting, so your own weight when sitting will operate the device. So when the when this chair just adjusts to your weight, you are compressing a spring, and this movement can operate the device. So if you imagine we are we have a lot. Of, if we go back to the, to the idea of, of ambient intelligence, when, when we interact with, the, with our environment, we are actually exchanging energy with our surroundings. The idea of Inocean is uh, use this energy for two purposes. One, for understanding what the user is doing. So for, let's say, inferring an intention by the user. And second, to power the electronics needed to communicate this intention or this command to the other devices. So that's why I like this uh, particular idea. Uh, this is an example of an, of, uh, an actuator in this case. And oh, sorry, it's the, it's the switch that we saw before. So the, this switch, that you see the circuit, and then the lever for the switch up and down. This is how it looks, uh, the electronic parts and the mechanical part, again with a coil and magnet. And there's a mechanical magnetic converter. And this is an example of the final shape once it is, it is packaged, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, example applications for the switches. This is a, the stop button of a, of a bus. If you go into a bus today, and you see this button just to, to call for the next stop, okay, you want to get down the next stop. Today, uh, the button is connected to a couple of wires that just run through the tube. And uh, if you go even in Torino, these buses have a lot of these buttons, and then there's the, the stamping machine for tickets, and then now there's the new stamping machine for the wireless tickets, and so on. Each of, the, each of them is just uh, screwed into some tube, and then all the wiring go through these tubes. Whenever they need to do some work or to add some devices, just imagine the wiring works that they have to do onto each bus of the line. And then you have to test the connection to certify them. With this technology, you just have to, just to screw it in place, it's done. Um, well, of course, this is the, all the, the circuitry. Uh, this is uh, an example of the energy generated by the, the, the thermal converter. Thermocouples. So uh, this is the so-called Peltier cell 
that will generate an oscillating signal, just an oscillator basically that gets its energy from the energy differential. Don't ask me for the physical principle behind that because I didn't understand it, honestly. I tried to, but uh, this is an, of, a, of an actuator. Uh, another that you can mount. That's just examples. Uh, and these are our other examples into energy uh, settings. Uh, so, sorry, into industrial settings. Hmm? Um, these are just ideas. Say, okay, uh, uh, the application for this kind of technologies are the home usage, but mainly building automation and inter industry automation. What is very, very e use easy to retrofit the existing systems by adding automation on top of that. I would be somewhat skeptical that or to use a radio frequency in an environment like this. When you have a heavy environment that uses a lot of uh, electrical motors that generate uh, electromagnetic magnetic noise uh, and uh, high frequencies or soldering machines, arc soldering machine that generates a little, no, they, they generate a lot of, uh, of uh, traffic into the EM spectrum. Uh, so um, up to now, I'm not aware that these uh, components are certified uh, for industrial environments. Uh, I would go for a wired connection instead of wireless. But for the buildings, uh, it might be uh, a good solution. Mm. And yet yeah, they give you the same example of a smart office with the light sensors and the presence sensor and the lighting actuators and so on. So this is a picture that every uh, home automation manufacturer gives you. They present it with their own technologies. And here they say, um, they say what, they, what they can provide. And uh, they say, OK, if you do this, you may have 40% uh, energy savings. This is just due to the energy management of the loads, of the lights, of the computers, of the lighting, and so on. And you can achieve this, 40 is a big fig figure, but you could achieve this with any other technology. The strength point of this in ocean is uh, uh, if you are building something new, it will cost you 15% less because there's less wiring. But especially if you are retrofitting something, so you already have a house, you already have an office, and you want to add automation, then the savings of energy harvesting technologies like in ocean compared to traditional wired or wireless would be very high, let's say 70% cost in the, in the work of, it, of um, adapting the environment and the plant. Okay, um, the other, okay, but the, the, they are giving some examples that if you want, you can have a look, but we don't, we don't want to comment all of them. Mm -hmm. I, I just, I mainly wanted to, to have an overview of the technology and the other, Good point is that uh, if you go to this uh, in Ocean Alliance uh, website, uh, you already find uh, a lot of components, uh, not as as many as with uh, the wave, but you, there are 200 components more or less finished uh, comp components by uh, 20 companies, 20 different manufacturers. So this means that the there's already a sort of an ecosystem of, uh, of manufacturers. You, you are not bound with one single manufacturer. Actually, what they did, what these people from Inocean did, was to concentrate on making the chipsets. They're, sell, they are selling you the chips, they're selling to everybody their chipset, and, but they don't sell components, finished components. They're just this, these are just the demo. Uh, finished products, but they, they are not selling these as an actual product. They're selling the electronics uh, to make it possible. And so many other different manufacturers are, so they are gaining, their profit comes from the chip and from the design, the concept, the protocol, and so on. And so they, this opens the market for many other manufacturers to be the, what they call applications or, or product or final products by using the, the same chips. So they, they decided uh, to have a, a very specific place in the value chain. Design the system and design the, the hardware, the, 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 the digital hardware and the electronics and the energy harvesting solutions. And the other are building the applications. And so you are not bound to one single 
manufacturer uh, in, if, you are if you decide to invest in this technology. Wanna play means that uh, what I show you here is the work of one of our students. Uh, actually, I tell you the story. Uh, there was a student that wanted in electronics uh, that wanted to do the master thesis uh, with us in the smart home uh, field. And so after a bit of discussion, we said, oh, well, we are very happy with the Z-Wave board, uh, the, um, the Raspberry board that is just plugged, uh, the one that you are using in the lab, uh, that is just plugged onto a Raspberry Pi and that gives you interface with the Z-Wave network. So why not? Why don't we build one? And so the thesis of this guy started from he started researching the chips, the documentations. Uh, in the documentation of the chip, there is a, if you already uh, if you ever had done some electronics, you know that there are some some application nodes usually. So if you go to a chip, usually you have the specification of the chip, and then what they call application nodes. Application nodes are examples of how you can use this chip, maybe in conjunction with other hardware. So there was an application note for how to integrate this on a board, and he did the hardware design. So he designed this board. Actually, it was all the work for this student. Uh, designed the, the layout, uh, the components. Uh, this is the antenna. He had to put it a bit far away from the chip. Uh, to, uh, to avoid uh, interference, all the, let's say, connections. And this is the connector that goes to the GPIO components uh, of the Raspberry. Actually, they are using the serial line communicating uh, between, so there's a serial connection between the chip and the Raspberry interface that goes through this connector. So this, you can just plug it into your Sorry, Raspberry connector, this is the antenna, and it just, and then it's just software. So at that point, the, the CPU of the Raspberry can communicate over the serial line with the chip that will handle the communication and all the network. So uh, that's what we try to do. I still remember the face of the student when he came with the first prototype. Not yet com uh, complete and connected, but uh, he was already, he already gave energy to it to show that it, so it was starting to, he, he, he was starting to debug it. And the, 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 when he came, we went to the website of InOcean and we saw that the week before <laughs> there was one component that was, I, this picture is not from our component, it's from the component by the Element 14, which is one hardware reseller. So actually there was one group, the Farnham Semiconductors actually, uh, which is the father of Element 14, decided to build a, a board with exactly the same layout, with exactly the same structure as this one. You see that it's more finished because of course it has the surface mounted uh, resistor instead of discrete resistors. It doesn't have all the uh, LEDs for checking the connection or the reset button because it's a finished product. So. But, uh, okay, the, the guy was not very happy because his tears were already done by an industry, but at the same time, he, did, he made it work, and uh, say, it was a confirmation that we had uh, a good idea or an idea that could go into the market. If you want to play, you, what, you, what you need is just to buy a Raspberry. You just need to uh, buy one of these boards to connect to a Raspberry, or otherwise, you need just one USB uh, controller with a chip. It's the same, that it go, but it goes into an USB port and then opens the serial connection to the chip. And then some components. For example, all the components that I that is shown to you are part uh, of what they call the, starting, uh, the starter kit uh, for Inokisha. So it's just a box with these four or five components uh, that are already working, even if they are next, they are not uh, packaged, but you, they, they are functional. So you can use, use them and play them uh, on your own or on the lab if you want uh, to use one of the Raspberry and, uh, and uh, these components that are already done. So this is just the, as a, as a promise, one hour of presentation of, uh, 
of the notion that they promised. And uh, this basically closes the, the, the class for today. We still have uh, some time if you need, uh, or if you want, uh, about if you have any questions for the exams, how it works, uh, uh, have some time for discussion, or otherwise uh, we will just thank you. And uh, the only issue is that uh, the, the exam will be the presentation of the work, or the group works, as you know. Uh, the issue is that we still don't know whether the exam will be into the LADISP lab or not, because in the, the next weeks uh, in the lab, they will need to do some works. They need to change the doors and the windows uh, and to modify the layout. So the lab will be closed for, for some days. I hope uh, the days in which they do the work are not the ones uh, planned for the exam. If there is some clash, we will try either to move the exam or to do it in a different room. But I would like to do it there because you already have all the equipment. You are familiar with the, with the environment, with the equipment, and so on. But we, I, I checked uh, half an hour ago, no, one hour ago uh, was, the, was the situation where we still didn't have a date, didn't have a date for the works to come. I will keep you updated, of course, on that. Okay. So I will close for the, today and uh, maybe we close the recording. If you have any questions, I will be here for the next half an hour. Thank you.